Thank you, dear friends, for sticking with us for six weeks. You are working hard and growing closer to each other. I appreciate the honest discussion around friendships last week. This week, we started a dialogue about fear. I truly believe understanding our fear dramatically improves our life in every way. I remember being overwhelmed by fear when the phone rang at 11 p.m. and the man on the other end told me our building was on fire. When I arrived, our 250,000 square foot building was burning to the ground. And even worse, a fireman had died. My only way to provide for my family was gone. And because of the fatality, I was under intense scrutiny from numerous government agencies. The pressure was insane and I was scared to death. I had headaches and anxiety for a year, wondering how I would provide for my wife and my two baby boys. I still feel the same fear when the phone rings late at night. I have another fear that was created at a young age. I remember making model airplanes with my brothers when I was in fifth grade. They were laughing at me because I got glue all over everything. I was humiliated and felt so bad about myself. You know, at nine years old, I had no idea what I was feeling. I just knew I hated it. And by being better than my brothers at everything, I discovered that they had a hard time picking on me. To this day, I feel a deep fear of being criticized. In fact, most of what I've accomplished has come from continual effort to avoid being criticized. What events from your past cause you to feel fear? In our discussions this week, many of you were transparent and willing to share a few of your deep-seated fears. I'm hoping tonight you'll go a step further and start to connect the dots to what causes those fears in you and then explore some ideas for how you can better experience, understand, and respond to your fear. First, let's open with prayer. Heavenly Father, thanks for this time to be with my brothers. Lord, I ask that you help us get some insight into this fear that we carry with us. Holy Spirit, lead us, guide us, open our eyes, help us see things in a new way. Father, don't let the camera and my words distract my dear brothers. Speak to them in the way they need tonight, Lord. Help us change, help us grow, Father. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Men, we are often told we don't show emotion, we act macho. But much of that bravado has come from our male role models who were fighting in wars or competing in athletics. In both of those hostile environments, men have to come to believe that they had to suppress physical pain and fear in order to achieve success. Now, unfortunately, in our daily lives, that approach to managing fear and pain can often lead us into seriously bad results, especially in human relationships. Today, Tenacity or grittiness are popular predictors of business success. But when you dig into those character traits, it's clear people who have a strong understanding of their personal fears have a far greater ability to push through challenging emotional situation than those who grit it out. I'm convinced men do not want to be macho. I believe we want to understand and express how we are feeling. Unfortunately, this idea of being tough has come to mean we ignore emotions of fear and repeat what we have seen in other men. When we feel fear, we get angry, we get violent, we get critical, we get quiet, we get sexual, or we get distant. Very rarely do we see another man say, I'm feeling some intense fear right now, and I'm not sure why. I think I need help, and I think I need God. We're all familiar with the anxiety and worry that accompany a lifestyle of fear. This constant state of low-level fear is very unhealthy. It leads to numerous health-related illnesses, headaches, ulcers, and an addiction to adrenaline. Less obvious is our diminished ability to problem-solve, creativity, to enjoy life, and to love people more easily. All of our relationships are strained and we struggle to find happiness in the common things of a normal lifestyle. Fear robs us of an intimate relationship with God because we cannot fully love people and the world around us. Men, God did not design us to live our life in a constant state of fear. Fear is one of six primary emotions every human being was designed to feel. Emotions are like waves. They come in and they go out. 
Fear is a signal of a perceived threat. God gave us fear to protect us from real threats by running, fighting, or freezing. It's clear that when a truck is about to run you over, fear is the appropriate emotion. But it's not the appropriate emotion every time you see a truck. So why do we have daily fears that affect every one of us when there is no imminent threat? Fear comes from past experiences like being abandoned, being abused, living in poverty, adultery, seeing death, uncertainty, letting people down, thinking you're unsaved, hostility, men in uniform, people from another race, and verbal abuse. Fear also comes from reading or watching content that creates images in our mind of over-dramatized events. Fear comes from seeing other men who have been severely hurt by loss of their income, divorce, accidents, illness, and verbal attacks. How we manage fear has a very significant impact on our behavior. For example, I have a deep-seated fear of abandonment from when my mom and dad left me at a very young age. I feel anxiety when I sense someone in my life is leaving. I hate saying goodbye. Separation causes me emotional pain. One way for me to avoid feelings of separation is by avoiding a deep connection. If I don't feel emotionally connected to someone, then it won't hurt when they leave. I, don't know that, I didn't know this about myself until about nine years ago. So for 45 years, I was avoiding deep connections and goodbyes. Understanding our past can help us understand how fear is triggering behavior that may seem irrational or uncomfortable for those around us. The first step in working through fear is recognizing when you're afraid. Many times we're feeling something but can't identify the emotion, let alone the cause. This is common for men. Here is a list of words that will help you spot emotions that are connected to fear. Confused, startled, tense, embarrassed, nervous, anxious, shocked, overwhelmed, ashamed, insecure, threatened, terrified, or panicked. I have found it can be difficult to identify fear in myself. You know, a good way to spot fear and its cause is to ask for help from a friend. Guys, when another man asks for help to sort out how he's feeling, just ask questions like, what are you feeling? What happened? When did it start? This step is critical to providing real help. Please don't start by telling him it'll be okay or you just need to pray and trust God. There are a few steps to follow and the sequence actually matters. For example, when you feel sick and go see a doctor, he follows a few key steps. He asks questions first. He then runs tests, analyzes the data, makes a diagnosis, and then finally recommends a treatment. If he started with a treatment without any of the first steps, you would get up and leave because you would know he had no idea what is wrong. When we start by telling people everything will be fine without really understanding their fear, your friend hears that you really don't care. It's a clear statement that you don't want to spend the time listening or you have no idea how to help. Men, there is also a real chance you may miss an imminent danger, like sexual abuse, overdose, financial crisis, or suicide that cannot be fixed with a blow-off statement and needs to be addressed immediately. So take the first step and ask questions to fully understand the fear. Who would you be willing to call if you needed to sort out how you are feeling? There's another source of fear we must address, trusting in people and the things of this world for security. The Apostle John said in 1 John chapter 2, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. He then said in 1 John chapter 4, there is not fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. John is saying that our unexplained daily fear is often rooted in our love for the things of the world at the expense of our love for God. Fearless love, on the other hand, is founded and based in a deep love for God. Jesus said, if you love me, you will follow my commands. 
Following Jesus increases our love for God and decreases our fear. Our daily fear is often correlated to our daily love for God. A high level of love for God takes away our fear. A deficit in our love for God results in high levels of worry and anxiety. Jesus said if we are heavy laden, which means afraid, then we should come to him to put on his yoke and to learn from him. He is saying for us to eliminate fear from our daily life, we must do the things he commanded. We must follow his lead. Let him be in control. David said, the boundary lines for me have fallen in pleasant places. When we live inside God's plan for our life, we live in a delightful place, meaning there's very little fear. The only way to live in obedience to Jesus is to give up control of our life to him. He has to be the one seated on the throne, making the decisions and setting the direction. Fear enters our life when we act like God and try to take his authority. When things start to go wrong, we quickly realize we can't control most things. We don't have the power, the breadth of knowledge, or the wisdom of God. So we fail to control all that is happening, and it makes us deeply afraid. When we were saved, we said we made Jesus Lord of our life. Yet for many of us, we never stepped off that throne. We are still Lord and filled with fear. Who are you trusting to run your life today? Once we discover the reasons for our fears, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to use our fear to drive us back to God. We can turn to God and follow the example of Jesus set in the garden when he, when he was facing a brutal death. We read in Luke 22 that his sweat was like drops of blood as he prayed to his father, crying out because his soul was overwhelmed with agony. Jesus was experiencing fear for he was fully human, foreseeing the intense pain of his flogging and crucifixion, which would be followed by an overwhelming loneliness and separation from his father. Jesus responded to this fear by taking his friends with him to a garden and weeping in prayer to his father. We too should grab a friend and cry to God when we're afraid. God hears our prayers. David wrote in Psalm 34, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Guys, God often speaks back to us through his words written in the Bible. After times of prayer, we should go read passages like these, Isaiah 41. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Men, God has chosen us and is with us. We are not on our own in any way or at any time. Psalm 56 says, when I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. If you forget this truth, just pick up a penny where these words are written, in God we trust. Our founding fathers are screaming from their grave, stop trusting in your wealth. It will fail. Trust in God. Men, we must choose each day in whom we will trust. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus will provide peace in your worst possible scenario. He promises he will. And then God told Joshua, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. If God commands us not to be afraid, then he clearly supplies us with what we need to live out that command. The Holy Spirit is living in us and was supplied by God to give us that courage and to give us peace. And in Philippians 4, Paul says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will, it will, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Praying with deeply felt thanksgiving pushes away fear 
because God will directly intervene. And he often intervenes at times by sending a friend to help you. What words of God have you memorized to help you rehearse away your fear? The last and most important way to eliminate fear from being the source of what drives you every day is to replace your fear of man with the fear of God. Jesus said in Matthew 10, do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. And Proverbs 14 says, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. Fearing God is respect and reverence for his power and authority. We fear him because we see his power to control what we cannot control when we try to sit on his throne. Fear of God teaches us to fear our own sinful lust for his power. As we know and love God more deeply, our fear diminishes because his love diminishes the things that separate us from him. Our reverent fear for God is grown by living out his commands to love. John said, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. As we look to move from fear to love, please know God will still be at work unaffected by your emotional state. When I was about 40 years old, I was standing with a mentor, Dr. Chuck Musfeld, and my only manufacturing plant at that time. He was trying to convince me that I should open a men's Bible study fellowship class on the, on the south side of Chicago. I told him I was deeply afraid that the time away from my business each week would cause the company to go broke. And he said to me, Bill, God does not work that way. He predicted that if I was obedient and would trust in the Lord, God might just build a large men's BSF class and significantly increase the size of my business. I prayed about the decision, and ultimately I followed his counsel by opening the class, yet I was still deeply afraid. Fast forward 20 years. The BSF class, which I started, is still open and has had thousands of men and hundreds of children attend, and my business has tripled in size. <laughs> God can accomplish way more than I can even when I'm afraid. You know, I wonder how much more joyful that time would have been had I trusted the Lord instead of clinging to my fear. What opportunity have you missed because of your fear? Paul told Timothy, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. God did give us fear to protect us from danger but he does not want us to carry that fear with us all the time, making our spirit timid, anxious, and full of worry. Men, we will experience fear many times in our life. We need to respond to that fear, not adopt it as our persona or as our fuel for achievement. I hope you'll join me this week as we follow these vital steps. Share our fears with a trusted friend. Let him ask questions. Pray read God's word, and then trust in God. I truly believe God can change our fears into peace and courage. I truly believe he will run our lives from his throne way better than we can from our chair. I'm encouraged as I rehearse these truths with you. This was incredibly valuable for me this week. I hope it is for you as well. Let us close with prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, help us learn to live with fear and to help manage it properly, Lord. Let it draw us back to you. Help us grow through this, Lord. Help us be better men. Shape us into men of courage and men that love you and are drawn to you and follow you deeply, Jesus. Help us love you in a better way. Help us love each other better. Lord, walk with us now as we continue to work together, grow our friendships. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Love having this time with you. I'll see you next week.